Women are not safe. Cervical cancer disproportionately affects younger women, and as a result, 20% of children who lose their mother to cancer do so to cervical cancer. Now, what's one of the main causes of cervical cancer? Human papillomavirus HPV. This is a common sexually transmitted infection that can affect the skin, genital area, and throat. But the good news is the infection can be prevented by both males and females getting vaccinated as early as age 9. If you are interested in learning more, please stay with us. I'm Adrian Atkinson, and I have more for you after this break. I was first diagnosed with cervical cancer at age 33. The treatment was not pretty. It was terrible. I could go to work, and I spent the whole five years out of work. The pain, the struggle, I removed my home. I thought, I'm finished with cancer. 2016, cancer come back. There's hope for your daughter. My experience don't have to be her experience. So mothers, give your children the vaccine. It will be good for you, your sake and for the children's sake. Don't wait. Vaccinate against cervical cancer. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, April 9, 2024. $25 million has been allocated to truck water to drought-stricken areas of Hanover and Westmoreland over the next six weeks. This is among several measures being taken by the government to alleviate water shortage in both parishes. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Senator Matthew Samuda, gave the update while meeting with stakeholders from both parishes in the grill on Thursday. We've identified funds to purchase 2,000 black tanks for Hanover and Westmoreland citizens who are most in need. And those will be distributed as soon as the purchase and the delivery takes place. We also outlined the major capital works, which include lines from Martha Brain to St. James, which does benefit the Great River System because then you have less pressure on the Great River System for St. James. We'll update the Great River System and indeed several other systems in Westmoreland. We'll also be doing 70 million US dollars of pipe work starting later. This year. According to the minister, Hanover and Westmoreland are among the parishes experiencing chronic drought, the impact of which is being felt by citizens and business operators. Approximately 1,000 Jamaicans from across the globe will converge on the island to create and strengthen business opportunities. The occasion is the staging of the 10th Biennial Jamaica Diaspora Conference, set for June 16 to 19. It is the first time the highly anticipated conference is being held in person since the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2024 staging was launched last week by Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith. She says the conference affirms the importance of coming together to bring transformation to key areas of focus. Quite simply, at this conference, connections will be made. Partnerships will be born. Some will be strengthened. Business opportunities are going to be created. You have to be there to be a part of it all. The experience will be that much richer if you are on the ground. And for those of you who have come before, you know it's good. And this one is going to be better. This year's event will be held under the theme, United for Jamaica's Transformation, Fostering Peace, Productivity and Youth Empowerment. Registration is now open. We will continue the important tradition of honoring diasporans who have worked hard and made significant contributions in their communities. And as such, the Governor General's Award for Excellence will be a feature this year. Our usual marketplace and government at your service will be available, along with a range of other goods and services that we can assure will be of interest to you. There will be other exciting offerings that will certainly make your attendance at the conference a worthwhile feature, whilst of course making good linkages for trade and investment opportunities, not just here in Jamaica, but also taking those trade and investment opportunities to your respective areas across the diaspora. The community of Freetown in northwestern Manchester is benefiting from free access to Wi-Fi service. It is part of the government's mission to install internet in communities across all 63 constituencies. The work was carried out by the Universal Service Fund, USF. 
Principal of the St. Paul's Primary School, Vinicia Fuller-Brown, encouraged students in the area to embrace the technology as a source for good and to use it responsibly. Technology is one of the vehicles run by the education system. And uh, this is where we are going now. And so we have to embrace technology. Member of Parliament Mikhail Phillips said the availability of the internet connection had opened the door for other developments. This financial year, now that we have the internet here, we will be commissioning and building out a small, com a small um, homework centre, homework unit upstairs for the students. Filmmakers, animators and creatives have until April 28 to apply for grants and loan funding to complete productions. However, applications for film festivals, market attendance, marketing and distribution, as well as production rebates will be accepted on a rolling basis for the rest of the year. The financing support is being drawn from a pool of $1 billion under the Jamaica Screen Development Initiative, JSDI. It's an initiative of the government to strengthen the local film industry with the support to complete projects across various stages of development. The aim is to provide opportunities for new, emerging and established talent behind the camera, equipping them to create more high-quality Jamaican content capable of competing in the global market. It is being led by the Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, and the Jamaica Film Commission. Projects eligible for funding include feature films, short films, animated shorts, web series, episodic, miniseries, or reality and unscripted content. Persons can apply online via dobusinessjamaica.com forward slash Jamaica Screen Development Initiative. And finally, the Ministry of Tourism continues to provide market support to affiliated businesses through its linkages network. At the ninth staging of the Speed Networking Initiative held recently in Montego Bay, various local and overseas tourism entities and suppliers were able to forge new partnerships and expand existing ones. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry, Jennifer Griffith, says it continues to have a significant impact on businesses in the sector. She reveals that since 2016, the event has generated approximately $1 billion for small and medium tourism enterprises. Participation each year has been consistently high because the speed networking event delivers. Each year after each event, the Linkages Network conducts a survey and each time the results have been so encouraging that we begin to plan for the next year. Take last year for example, when we had a total of 140 sellers and buyers interacting in this space. 94% of hotels surveyed said that they were satisfied with the products presented to them. Equally, 80% of tourism suppliers reported receiving business leads as a result of participating in our speed networking event. Regular attendee Crystal Ann Thompson testified to the expansion of her hair and skincare business to the overseas market. Today we have over 50 products. Today we distribute island-wide in all the parishes and Thank you so much. And we're exporting to, I could say, almost everywhere in the world. We have been reaching far places in the world, and I have to say it started right here. It started right here to get bigger, to get much larger than us, to the point where happiness is a small word. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Once upon a time in a Caribbean island known for its rich culture, natural beauty, lived a group of people who were buried in piles and piles and more piles of paper. Papers spanning back to the start of time. Then came a bright idea, harnessing technology to work smarter and not harder. The government of Jamaica is improving its operations to serve citizens better. Many services are now available online, and there's more to come. The Government of Jamaica, building a better public sector for all.
Imagine your teenager waiting with excitement to get through high school and start your life as a young adult. Maybe you plan to study at a university or get a job. Then all of a sudden, the unexpected happens. You're faced with potentially being at risk for cervical cancer. Protect yourself and your loved ones from HPV. The human papillomavirus is a common sexually transmitted infection that can cause various health problems, the worst being cancer. To learn more about preventing this, please turn your attention to this next feature. Globally, cervical cancer is the second most common type of cancer in women with over 85% occurring in developing countries. Every year, 528,000 new cases are diagnosed and there are approximately 270,000 deaths. By 2050, without any intervention, the number of diagnosed cases of cervical cancer is expected to increase to 1 million per year, with approximately 90% of the deaths occurring in developing countries like ours. A major factor is the human papillova virus, HPV, of which there are approximately 200 types that infect epithelia, or skin tissue. At least 14 types of the human papilloma virus have been found to cause cancer of the cervix. Types 16 and 18 are responsible for 70% of cancers of the cervix, which is a second leading cause of cancer-related deaths in Jamaica. The virus can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact, from mother to child at birth. Current estimates indicate that every year, just under 400 women are diagnosed with this disease, with the majority of deaths occurring in women between the ages of 40 and 64 years of age. This reality has prompted the Jamaican government to take the initiative to prevent cervical cancer through the introduction of the bivalent human papillomavirus HPV vaccine. The World Health Organization, WHO, recommends that HPV vaccines be included in national immunization programs as a core strategy for primary prevention against cervical cancer. WHO states, Mr. Speaker, that HPV vaccination for girls ages 9 to 14 years is the most cost-effective public health measure against this disease. More than 70 countries around the world, including more than 20 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, have already introduced the vaccine. Several studies and monitoring by the World Health Organization, WHO Global Advisory Committee on Vaccine Safety, proved that HPV vaccination is safe and works extremely well decreasing the number of HPV infections and related precancers. The bivalent HPV vaccine introduced by the Ministry of Health in schools at grade 7 to girls ages 9 to 14 provides for 90 to 100 percent protection against HPV types 16 and 18. The vaccine is offered free of cost. Bear in mind too by the way the cost to administer one of these vaccines for us the cost is somewhere in the region of seven eight us dollars now, if you go into the private sector you're looking at anywhere from eleven to fifteen thousand dollars so it's not inexpensive this vaccine is not mandatory approximately twenty two thousand five hundred girls were targeted for the vaccine's introduction in 2017 with each girl needing two doses given six months apart for full protection. Generally speaking, the process has gone smoothly. The school-based strategy for implementation seeks to facilitate greater access to the targeted population. And this disease prevention strategy will save the government millions. The Ministry of Health estimated that annual cost for the program after introduction will be 73.3 million Jamaican dollars. In Jamaica, the estimated cost is of, of the just under 400 cases annually, Mr. Speaker, is some $274 million. 
I should point out that this figure is only for radiotherapy and does not include diagnosis and chemotherapy. And for the individual, not just the emotional and physical trauma caused by this cancer is removed, but the financial burden. In the United States, cost on diagnosis is approximately some 15, 15,000, just under 16,000 US dollars. If the patient survives for a year, this right goes up to approximately 30,000 US dollars. Despite vaccination, persons will still need to do their routine pap smear to check for any threat or signs of the cancer, as the key to effective treatment, if it should occur, is early detection. For more information, or to have your concerns answered, you can call the Ministry of Health's toll-free line 1-888-1-LOVE or 1-888-663-5688. Also email hpvinfo at moh.gov.jm. You can also visit the website moh.gov.jm as well as social media channels. I love waking up every day in this country. This is where I was born and raised. I have such a passion for my country and for me this is home. In Jamaica a lot of people um, they look at just like beach, you know, sea, sand, but our mountains are something to behold. It's majestic up there and it's a different type of peace. It's a different type of lifestyle completely. I could mention many different places that are amazing, but the one thing I do love about Jamaica as well is that you can find that relaxation, you can find that chill in your backyard. Apart from it being an incredibly beautiful country, an incredibly beautiful island, we have a wonderful, wonderful culture, wonderful, vibrant, colorful people. There is definitely a realness to Jamaica. There's definitely something that no matter what keeps you in touch with reality here. Why come to Jamaica? It all comes back down to Jamaica as a whole. You know, the food, the music, the culture, the people, the climate. Come out and meet us, come out and experience what Jamaica has to offer. Let's brighten your mood a bit. Music is the perfect solution. Let's join reggae artist Kalia in Hit Me with Music. I didn't come in this for money. Um, if I did, I would have released my first song and left. <laughs> girl Kalia is not afraid to let her fans know of her hard work. In fact, it's a badge of honor for her. Talking to the Westmoreland native, you will hear a bit of Cockney, but that's due to her Londonian upbringing. I did migrate with my mom when I was about six, uh, but you know, summer always come back, summer holidays, up until the age of like 19, 20, I'd never been to any other country but Jamaica. It was also at a tender age that the singer knew she wanted to be in the spotlight. I always wanted to, you know, perform, uh, whether it was singing or dancing. I'm not so good at dancing, but uh, acting as well and just being on stage. Not quite settled on becoming a professional vocalist, the youngster still wanted to get into the studio. Thanks to a UK-based company called Urban Development, she did just that. They ran these projects for school children at the time, and they basically had us build a record label 
and put on a show at the end of the the um, project. So that was the first time I stepped into a studio. It was the first time I understood how the music industry worked. And so it gave me more confidence to say, okay, now I know how to do what I want to do. She started recording music officially at the age of 15, but would still need that push to make it into the big leagues. That of course would take someone with an umpire status. I bumped into Shaggy while I was in Miami and I decided to build up the courage to approach him and just ask him, can I send you some of my music? And he gave me an email address. I really thought it was fake, but it was a real address. And he listened to the music and sent me uh, the contact for Tony Kelly. Record producer Tony Kelly has been grooming the young artist ever since. But while overseas reception was growing, the birthplace of reggae still didn't know the singer. As it turns out, Getting to know Kalia was pretty easy. A lot of people have been in that position where they've been to university and you know they they spend all this money they spend all this time they get the degree and then they go to apply for the job and they're like well no because you don't have the experience or you don't know certain people so yeah that um frustration i definitely feel for myself and i think other people felt it so that's why it connect it was probably one of the first songs I'd written and actually put out that was very vulnerable for me. It was really about feeling like you're putting in so much work um, and energy and just not getting to where you want to be and just feeling frustrate, frustrated but at the same time hopeful because you're never going to give up. She confesses that while her music is rooted in reggae, her influences stem from a melting pot of genres that has led to the performer she is today. Growing up in London, there is, there's a lot of Jamaicans in London, so you know, you're always really there, yard. So of course, I would still be up to date with what's happening in Jamaica with the reggae, with the dancehall. But, uh, you know, grime uh, was, was big when I was growing up and house music, funky house music. When it comes to collaborations, the singer had a full circle moment with Shaggy and a moment in time with the lyricist Tanya Stevens. But she still has her eyes on some other big names. I'd love to work with people like Samori Ai, um, Rasai, Savannah, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. Yeah, those are some of the artists that, you know, I think that we would do great music together. Music that flow from the cathartic stream of her own experiences or that of friends and family members. If the story is compelling, Kalia wants to share it. Like I did with Waiting On You, I wrote about, you know, a man that I really liked at the time. If you ask me for marriage, I will certainly say I do. At least I love it, no average. Every day is a honeymoon. And with Easy, uh, that's beginning line. Uh, it's really my mother's experience. Throw the yard for seven year long. Then them say experience in a oven, that no fair man, Jano. While Easy has a militant anthem, Kalia is very much a lover, something that shines through her first EP. So how does she keep that balance? I think for me, um, I, reggae music has always been rebel music, it's always been music for a cause. So I do intentionally think about that when I am creating music, but at the same time, I do create music for myself because I love music, so I still have to stay true to me. Stay true is the name of my EP, by the way. <laughs> I still have to stay true to myself as well. And obviously remember that I have had influences from so many spaces and so many genres. So yeah, but I definitely have to um, stay true to the reggae as well because foundation is, is important and the foundation is, is music with a cause.
Kalia is presently working on her debut album and is also eyeing her European tour coming up this summer. It's all very exciting. I'm excited to be a part of this new wave of reggae because I feel like it's been a while since we've had like an insurgence of so many great artists coming up like all at once. So it's, it's exciting for me. Are you an entrepreneur producing an excellent Jamaican product or service? Did you know you can earn hard currency and more significant returns by exporting? Contact the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce to help propel your business along the export lane. Everything you can produce, the Jamaicans overseas want it. We're not going to get rich by just bringing down the debt. We're going to get rich by exporting a lot more. So grow exports. Create job opportunities, drive economic growth through exports to make Jamaica a richer and much more prosperous country. As we close off today's show, please remember to take your health in your hands. Visit your nearest health center to find out about the HPV vaccine. It is our actions of today that will save us tomorrow. We're at the end of our program, but be sure to join us again tomorrow for another lineup geared towards providing you with information on the government's policies and initiatives for building a better Jamaica. You may visit our website, jis.gov.jm, to rewatch this show or to catch up on lots more. I'm Adrian Atkinson from our production team here at the GIS. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.